good morning everyone. So last year around Christmas, I finished my creative writing workshop with uh, some students from various schools across the country and they were all having their lunch and that's when I overheard this conversation. There were two girls from one city in Rajasthan and they were talking to each other and during the conversation one girl said to other, finish quickly as we have to go back, we have to catch train. So the other girl replied, no. And there was a frown on her face. I don't want to go back. I've been enjoying here. That was a compliment for me, but the part that came next made me worried. She said, Vapis is school jacket padna padega. So when we go back to school, we'll have to read. The keyword here is read, not learn. Indians in their daily conversation use the word read or study when we refer to school. Schools are supposed to be the temples of knowledge, of learning. But the word learning somehow is missing in our daily conversation. And when I talk to parents, why do you send your children to school? They say, we want to educate them. Good. What is education? Uh, there's that. Everybody has his own, own definition. They'll come up with some random stuff. Some of that is very good. Some would just be like, you know. There's one thing that everybody agrees on. And that is that our education system is highly influenced by political and corporate interests. Does that mean that I'm just sending my children to school so that they can serve a particular government or bring benefit to a certain corporate? I think school should not mean a form, not mean a formal setup. You know, same old classrooms, everybody sitting in a row, bell baji good job, bell baji bad job. Itna bade khana khao ge, ye kam to jail mein bhi ho raha How does the present work? You sit in a row, you wear a particular uniform, there's a fixed time for your lunch, there's a fixed time for your breakfast, there's a fixed time for your assembly. A group of or a cell of prisoners have a super, supervisor, a superintendent and then the jailer. Are we just copying our entire school system from the prison system? No, I think any place from where you can get something to learn should be considered as a school. Um, every country in the world has their own uh, curriculum and everything. But in India, where geography and ethnic diversity is so vast, a single standard curriculum can be very dangerous. I don't understand how do you teach about snowfall in Kerala and how do you teach about, let's say, air conditioners in Ladakh. You can show them the picture in a book. You can tell them, okay, this is how snowfall is. You feel very cold. But how do you make them experience that? Education or schooling does not mean showing them something on a smart board or opening a book and make them read. There has to be some element of experience in it, which I believe is missing in most of the cases. <coughs> Each child is born with a different level of intelligence. At school, what we do try to do is we just push them in a certain space so that we can compare them with others. And in order to do that, we try our best to make them like others. So basically what we are doing, we are just creating carbon copies of each other. And then we have created a matrix, and then there is a whole examination system, so we can check who's good, who's bad, who can perform better. But in this whole race of rushing to get numbers and get good score and put a huge number outside the school on that banner, okay, we have scored 98.9% and all those brochures put nice graphs, this school is the best. Why? All our students passed last year. In this whole rat race, there is one thing that we are forgetting. What about creativity? What about that child who really wants to do something? And that something may not be what you are teaching. How many of you expect this that uh, whatever we learned in school and while you were learning that, while you were reading that subject, did you ever feel ye kyu pad rahe hain ye kabhi life mein kaam aayega ke nahi almost every now i can see hands up you know we all felt that whatever we are studying we may not use it it could have been other way around i mean 
when I was studying, I felt that this is useless. But today, I realize, no, this is good. I could use something, something from somewhere. So there is a justification. The only problem is when that child is studying, are we convincing him at that stage that what he is studying is important? That's where the rule of school should actually come in, and that's the missing block here. People often say that if uh, our students can get good education, and if we can, you know, make them, bring them to a certain level, they can get good job, they can be famous, they can be rich. You don't get famous just by going to a good school. Do anybody, does anybody know which school Michael Jordan or Charlie Chaplin went to? Do you know about the education of say, Sachin Tendulkar or any of these people? Once you reach that stage, your education may not matter. But to reach that stage, you have to do what you really like. Ideally, school teachers I think the school should teach us the way we can learn, the way our brains understand. Instead, what has happened is, we have got books, we have got a standardized content, which was introduced somewhere during the Industrial Revolution, and from the last 200, 300 years, we have not changed anything. We have changed the content, but the process, the system has been there since then. And in this entire process, industry is changing every five to six years. Our education is not. So we are lagging behind. Every dawn, some part of the world witnesses a new form of technology. Technology that has taken us to a level where standing 20 years back, we would have not even imagined. But the course book that you have, the language might have changed. The content, more or less, is similar and what schools do, based on that, they just they have huge advertisements, numbers that they obtain by conducting exams, exams which are based on that old setup of rote learning. A while ago, my eight-year-old daughter came to me and said, Papa, you taught me that uh, GK chapter. You know, so many days, exam is already over, but I still remember that chapter that you taught me. For an eight-year-old child, class third student, it is abnormal to remember anything after the examination gets over. Look what we have done to ourselves. If you have to judge everyone on standard parameters, it is important that you train them with the same content. And all those books took precedence. And it became important that if you have to learn, you have to learn from this book only. For example, in my daughter's case, that GK book, there's a possibility that when I'm interacting with my daughter and when I'm taking her out to some place, I'm teaching her much more than what that book can. However, the school won't understand that. They need to see whether she can remember all those names and dates which are mentioned in that particular book which they have described. When times came, you know, when time new reforms came, uh, technology also changed, uh, lot of stuff is being introduced and implemented, but somehow they are not able to solve the problem. You know, what's happening is our reforms are trying to solve a problem using a system, not realizing that the system itself is the problem. So all we are doing is patchwork. We say that Finland education system is the best. They were not always best. Decades ago, they were having their own kind of crisis. They came out of it. How? They did not took that path of patchwork. They said that we will start from scratch. So what happened? They rebuilt their entire system. On the contrary, in India, we are just trying to do the patchwork. However, there was a private curriculum introduced. There was there's an international board of education also, other than state board and the central board that we have. <coughs> that private and international board are doing some good job because they are focusing on liberal arts, they are focusing on multi-intelligence, they are focusing on interdisciplinary learning. But it's not effective. You know why? Because they cannot reach every child in the country. Out of 3 point, uh, sorry, 1.3 million schools we have in India. 1.3 million schools who are catering to roughly 315 million students. This private and international board combined the count has not crossed 2500 yet. So they are not in the reach of every child. Uh, now, the schools are not performing as they are supposed to. 
It's not the school management or the teachers or the principal that can always be blamed. Parents play an important role. So I was conducting this uh, workshop in Jalandhar and uh, you know, during the conversation I just asked them, who's the art teacher? I want to ask you something. Art teacher, please get up. And blank, no one was there. So I asked the principal, where's your art teacher? Why is he not attending this workshop? He said, sir, we don't have an art teacher. Crazy. A school doesn't have an art teacher? How is that possible? He said, no sir, you're wrong. We had an art teacher and he was one of the best teachers in the city. So what happened? He said, parents happened. Parents used to come to him and complain. A master ki putya gala sinhandeo. They actually use that word that you are spoiling our kids because because of you, kids are getting more interested in art and craft and drawing and colors and they are not reading maths and science. And they said they you know complain so much that the teacher got frustrated. Parents stop getting them colors and no drawing pads. In the teacher spent his own money to get drawing pads and colors to make sure that these kids can still live with whatever little of their childhood is left. But parents opposed to that and they said, please stay away from all this, don't spoil them. Let these kids learn so they can get a better job, they can secure better marks. Arts me koi marks nahi hoke. Teacher left the job. It's painful, it's shameful. Talking of art, let me ask you one thing. If I say nature scene, what comes to your mind? Let me guess. Hills? 60 degree to 120 degree? Straight lines? And then there's an R representing sun with one ray long, one shot, one long, one shot. On the right side, two V-shaped birds. There's an S-shaped river. There's a hut. Yes, sir. And if you are left a little bit of time, maybe a smoking chimney and a tree. Drawing ka bhi ratta mara hua hai. Sharat kar lo. We are talking of creativity here. This is what has happened. This is what I call road learning. We have been initiated into road learning to a level. I am going to go away from now. Stand up and answer, and my answer 
answer is not up to the mark. It's like slightly silly or stupid. Others will laugh at you. Ladies and gentlemen, as parents, as teachers, as seniors, or as elders, if you ever encounter any such situation, please walk up to that kid, help that child to speak up. Because if that child, out of this peer pressure, out of this fear of insult, stops speaking today, then this child will grow up to be an adult who will stand on the road and then there is someone beating some other person in front of him, he will not speak up. Someone will destroy everything around him, he will not speak up. A politician will reach the top position of the country, destroy the entire country, this kid will not speak up because he has been trained to think that if he speaks up, he might be insulted, others might think that he is a fool. He cannot lead. We don't need that kind of generation That's, that can destroy the entire fabric of this society. Uh, when teachers say that we don't allow children to ask questions in class because if everybody starts asking questions, then how will we complete these slavers? Well, yes, there is a general problem because they have to complete this level. There is a pressure from the management. But look at this. What are you doing in this entire process? You are just looking at that one take in your lesson plan diary. But obtain that one take in that lesson plan diary and to prove that you have completed this levels, you are killing that one element that has kept this human race alive, the element of curiosity. We are just creating machines. Uh, when I go to schools, I also encounter one thing which is kids think that all their subjects are different. How come? The bell rings, this book has to be folded, put it back, put this book back in the bag, take out the next book, reset your mind, whatever you have studied so far is totally different, we start afresh. They don't even realize that things are connected. I asked one class, uh, what are the two subjects that bother you most? They said history and Hindi. Okay, what are, give me one character from each. From history they gave Akbar, from Hindi they said Rahim. I said, is there any connection between Akbar and Rahim? No, sir. You agree? Ever heard this name Abdul Rahim Khai Khana? No, sir. They couldn't even guess that Rahim is a Muslim name because they are reading Rahim ke Dohe in Hindi. So if it is Hindi, how can Rahim be a Muslim name? There's a kind of mindset that the small kids have. This is class 7. So I said, uh, this is school in Ghaziabad and they cross this Barakula flyover whenever they come to Delhi. And there's a huge tomb on that uh, Barakula flyover which is known as Rahim's tomb, Abdul Rahim Khai Khana's tomb. I said, have you seen Jodha Akbar movie? Yes, sir. Have you seen Bairam Khan? That Khan Baba, teacher of Akbar, yes sir. Khan Baba Sahib Abdul Rahim Khan Khan buried in that tomb. Who is Rahim? Or Jinnu Nevo Dohe Likhe Hai, Rahman Dhaka, Prem Ka, Mat Toro Chakka Hai, Tu Ke So Phir Na Jure, Jure Gaat Pari Jai. And Tarwar Phal Nahi Khaat Hai, Sarwar Piyat Na Paan, Keh Rahim Parka Chhe, Tam Pak Sancha Sujaan. That Rahim, one of the Navratans of Akbar, sitting in his court. But he is not fighting that connection. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important that we, that we start thinking out of the box. It is important that teachers go to the class and tell that I cannot teach in 30 different ways and 30 intelligent minds are sitting here. I can only help you learn. So I will tell you what is to be learned and you can step out and experience yourself. Like Charakya said, Purushkara Anuvartate Dhyano, which means God help those who help themselves. Thank you.